Good day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech, and I'm back with another sweet Tinker CAD lesson. My friends, I'm going to take you down into the featured shapes today. So let's get cracking. All right, friends. So if you look at this awesome crown molding, uh, it is actually an optical illusion. Check it out. My crown molding is made of biggies. There's a special tool called SVG Revolver, and it can take a SVG, which is a two-dimensional file, and then it can revolve it. And when it first popped in, it had 360 degrees or 300 degrees, so it went around. But then I changed the sides so that it looked more like crown molding just because I thought it was kind of cool. So let me show you where these are. If you click your basic shapes, there are some cool things that are available including the new making at home and the smithsonian we'll check those out though when we're done where i went was the featured ones now i have used the spring the softbox the bent pipe a ton i just played with the svg revolver so let me show you how it works when you bring it out it asks for an svg well once again that's a flat file that you could download or you can create so watch this I typed puppy icon. I'm going to find a puppy that I think is fun. I'm going to use my snipping tool to quickly grab the tiny puppy image. And then I'm going to do file save as. I'm going to put it in my downloads folder. And I'm going to call it puppy. I'll leave the word capture just because I always do. I'm going to close that and go to a website that I will put in the description. It's pick SVG. And we need to upload our picture once again we go back to downloads there's our puppy and when you bring it in it gives you different ways to bring it in so i'm going to check invert one that would be fine i'm going to check ready two that would be fine i'm going to just check ready two ready three invert four i don't like that don't want that dot so I'm just looking for one that has the good lines to cut out I'm gonna take that one and I'm gonna just download the SVG once again I'm gonna put it in my downloads folder but I'm gonna change it so it says puppy S uh, SVG and they already do the SVG for me so now let's return to Tinkercad and we could drag the file but I'm gonna choose it there it is in my downloads so when i hit open you just have to wait a moment it was probably a 30 second wait but i sped it up and we end up with a sweet little puppy now i'm going to do another one of my favorite tricks i'm going to hold shift and i'm going to grow this so now we can take a look at it that's pretty wild so this would not be 3d printable uh, because these pieces that are floating would be a problem uh, I am going to change the number of sides again so it chops it up a little bit. It is a fantastic shape, and you could really do some funny stuff where you surprised people with what's in there. Um, if you shorten this so it only revolved a tiny bit, uh, that would make a pretty wicked cool, I'm going to type 2, uh, cookie cutter. See if I can get it to come back. So we would just have to extrude it a little further, but then we could do that with any SVG. So just playing with the SVG revolver, it lets you kind of see just what you can play with. <laughs> we can rotate it up and down like it's animated, but it's just a fun tool that you get to fiddle with. I'm going to just move my puppy back to the back, and then I'd like to move down and show you the curved words. Notice it lets you pick a different arc. Remember, you almost always have to backspace so you can type. I'd lose my YouTube card if I didn't ask you to subscribe. We'll make that red. Give it some time to grow. If you make it too large, notice they connect with each other. I'm going to change that to uh, 16. Typing the font is a better idea. I'm also going to change the height to 4 so it's thicker. 
and then if you had a radius, so right now the radius is 22. So if you check it out, there's 10, 20, 22 for how far apart it is. If you needed that a different distance, it's smarter to type than stretching. Stretching's fine, but you break the commands that are built in here when you do it. So I'm going to do undo, and I'm going to put my number that I know I need. Now, of course, pretending, but I'm going to do 35 for the radius. So that means it'd be 7 centimeters across. Then I can go up here and adjust this to 20, and they'll be a little bit larger and the right distance away from each other as well. Next, really quickly, I want to show you the soft box. You can type in the numbers, of course, and it makes a nice rounded box. Uh, pretty slick if you've got a need for that. Uh, the other box that I like, and I'm actually going to use it in a project I'm making soon, I think, is the adjustable box. Uh, this little dude is pretty sweet. Uh, you can type in the measurements you need. So say you wanted it to be 60, pop. It's immediately 60 long, 40 wide, and you could have all kinds of cool creations with the box. And then when you're done with that, uh, duplicate it. So here's Control D, and you can turn it into the box top using the same type tricks, and they will actually fit together. Now, I don't want this to be this high, so if I go to this and make it 5, then you'll be able to see that this would fit on top of that perfectly, and they've got the tightness adjustments. So kind of, uh, so many cool little tricks to actually let you 3D print a box in very few steps. So part of our exploration and my whole what will we learn today, um, they've got a making at home that gives you parts like you could find in your house to build with, so you could... Uh, create stuff with pencils and you can just model something in Tinkercad that you actually physically put together at home which is kind of cool I'll see if I can come up with some lessons for that so under the Smithsonian they've got all kinds of things they have digitized uh, and you can actually bring in the real models and check them out uh, these are scalable so you can actually tinker with them and make them look different uh, you could have a ton of fun putting all kinds of things together and adding real smithsonian artifacts to your cool creations Alrighty, friends so hopefully that taught you something new and hopefully you also had a little bit of fun if you enjoyed the video please give it a like if you got a question comment or suggestion add it down below if you haven't subscribed yet what are you waiting for smash that subscribe button and last but not least hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when this brand new video from me hl mod tech thanks for watching have a great day